if you want to become insanely wealthy, you need to know what you're going to do with your money right now. And it, it better not be your average answer. Because if your average answer, money wants to be cooler than that. It doesn't want to hang out with the average person. Money wants to hang out with someone who, who knows exactly how they're going to donate it, to whom they're going to give it, to whom they're going to be responsible for, what charities they're going to, they're going to donate to, what homeless people they're going to be helping. Money wants you to be creative. It wants you to be the best version of yourself. And if all you're going to use money for is to pay off your credit card loans and your student debt, it's not going to be with you because you're not cool. So if you have, let's say $2,000 and you want to start investing, you have a few choices. Um, choice number one is the choice that no one's going to want to do, but that is take that $2,000 and go hire someone to give you $200,000 worth of value because you can make that $2,000 back. If you're like, oh, but I'm gonna miss out on future returns, future returns on two grand. <laughs> so you're missing out on 200 bucks. Okay. Don't, you know, don't worry about it. So that honestly, step number one is buy some really good books or, or hire a mentor or spend time in some environment with that two grand, if that's all the money that you have to invest in, it's not gonna be a life-changing amount of money. You have to build and invest in yourself. I think, I think uh, Benjamin Franklin said, investing in yourself because the bank of the mind is the one that will never be robbed, something to that extent. And even though it sounds counterintuitive, people are like, oh, if I got $2,000 saying invest in myself, what am I gonna receive back? You're gonna receive knowledge you're going to receive the knowledge of what to do with more money, right? Because if you have $2,000 and let's say you turn it into three and you turn three into six and then six into 18, what do you now do with that 18,000 and how do you grow it even faster? If you don't already have that information, that knowledge, and it won't happen regardless. So that would be my first suggestion is invest in yourself, either books, mentors, tutors, classes, seminars, programs, spend that money to create the value inside your, inside your brain. At the end of the day, However much money you're going to make is going to purely come down to how much you know. If you receive $10 million in the bank account tomorrow, what would you do? And if your answers are, I would pay off all my debts, I would buy a new car, I would buy a new house, I wouldn't have any debts. If that's the first thing your mind went to, that's, the, that's what the majority would do, right? That's what everyone else would do. It's not the right answer. Right. I mean, if you get $10 million, I mean, you got it. You have to know right now exactly what to do with that money. I mean, what stock are you going to buy? What life insurance settlement are you going to purchase? Uh, what life insurance policy will you buy for yourself? Uh, how will you take an umbrella policy to protect yourself and your family? Um, what rental properties will you buy? Right. You, you have to know I mean, what cities will you buy them in? How much are you going to spend? What's your cap rate? What's your interest rate going to be? You need to know so many details about how it's going to be when you're wealthy. Otherwise, the chances of it happening is very, very, very small. The thing that kept me with trading for long enough to become profitable is the fact that I've read enough statistics that said that something along the lines that the average trader blows up their account in the first six months, but it also takes the average trader two years to become profitable. Um, so that made me realize this is why most people don't become profitable because they pull up their accounts first. Uh, and on the same token, I looked at, you know, the Forbes 400 list and I saw there's so many people that have made fortunes in finance. So I knew that it was possible. I just had to stick with it long enough to figure out how. Um, and that's exactly what I did. You know, I put in those hours literally uh, consuming, you know, any books I could, like, for example, um, Jack's books that you had on the podcast, uh, Jack Schwager, he has fantastic books with Market Wizards. Um, uh, any courses I could get my hands on online, um, just and just putting in the hours on the charts. Um, you know, sometimes while sitting in class and it, just making every single hour count. And I, I'm pretty sure I'm, I should be at the 10,000 hour mark already, if not very close. Sometimes people read a book on stocks or trading and they think they they know all the same stuff. But there's a lot of things that you cannot just learn from books. And like I would say books are here, courses are there, but then like the real experience, you know, that's the hardest knowledge and experience to earn um, because now I'm at this point where I can look at a chart and not only do I see a pattern, but much more, I my memory starts kicking. And I'm like, wait a second, I've seen a chart like this before. Maybe I've seen a chart like this five times before. 
you know, chart patterns, we're talking about volume, we're talking about, you know, the speed of change. And like, there's so many different things that you simply can't all memorize in books. But if you've been looking at charts, if you've been trading uh, for this long, you start stacking up this frame of reference, this, this reference book, so to say, in your mind. And I think, I honestly, like the, the biggest part to drive as a trader in that sense would be to become almost like a, like Zen. I don't trade when I'm upset. I don't trade, like an upset could be because of life situation. Let's say a girl breaks up with you, don't trade. If you have a bad trade, stop trading. Learn how to take breaks. Like you always wanna, only wanna go to the trading desk when you're in a really strong psychological position where you're neither upset nor are you overconfident because both of those are profit killers. And I think one of the simple questions I like to ask myself and that like I keep always around is would a pro do this? And I think that's what a lot of beginning players must ask, uh, traders must, must ask themselves because many times we do all this little bullshit um, where we go all in maybe with leverage on like some stock pick that a friend gave you, but then ask would a pro do this? Hell no. Like imagine you were actually running a hedge fund. Imagine you were managing other people's money. Could you afford taking that trade? The answer is 90% of the time, no. Um, well, would, would a hedge, like, you know, would, an, would a fund manager maybe put a stop? Well, yeah, definitely. They could not afford telling their investors, sorry, we just lost everything. Or sorry, we, we, we used so much leverage to pull up our accounts. No. So I love to ask the question always, you know, would a pro do this? And it just takes some self-honesty and self-awareness. So most people are afraid of the unknown and the unknown to them is not being poor because they know what, they know what that feels like. Like I know what being poor feels like. They know what being poor feels like and living paycheck to paycheck and eating ramen and chicken and uh, sleeping on futons and, you know, not being able, you know, turning off the lights because they're afraid that they might run over their electricity bill, uh, taking two minute showers because they want to stay on their water bill. I get what poor is like. I've been there, you know, in instead of uh, instead of having Captain Crunch, I ate Sergeant Sugar, right? So I know what being poor is like, but you also have to know what being rich is like. And if you have a bad taste in your mind for people who drive nice vehicles, live in nice houses, and you use terms like filthy rich, like since when is rich being filthy? Like if you have these preconceived notions that rich people are mean, angry, greedy, uh, conceited, and arrogant, you're not gonna ever become rich because your brain doesn't want to be conceited, mean, and arrogant. You want to be a beautiful, loving person. But if you also see that there are rich people who are incredibly beautiful, who donate, who are generous. I mean, I just went to the San Diego Zoo yesterday and I saw plaque after plaque after plaque about people who donated their life savings, their, their all their money when they died to a certain establishment in the zoo for protecting of animals. I mean, that is like, we never hear about those things, but those people, that happens all the time. So there are rich people just as many rich people that are, are mean and arrogant. I know a lot of rich, uh, poor people who are mean and arrogant. Um, just as many rich people are beautiful and loving and incredible people. I know a lot of poor people who are beautiful, loving, and incredible. So it's, it's just what, whatever you see, whatever you focus on. I literally put it that way. Like trading for me is like stepping into like a gladiator arena, right? The mistake beginners make is that they think they have to stay in this arena the whole time to fucking fight until they die. Make my fight, I'm winning, I go out, I rest, I recover, I get ready for the next fight. I'm looking for the right opportunity, I'm looking for the right opponent that I know I can win against. So it's really like treat yourself more like you're waiting for the opportunity than you're just like jumping in the water like hoping that you catch a fish, you know? And something I've really learned over these seven years is that there will always be opportunity. I know it's so easy, it's so, so easy, even now, um, to still get caught by the, the fear of missing out, right? Because we think, well, well, what if this is the last time it bottoms? What if it goes up now? That's fine. It, it will still, something will still go up tomorrow. Something will still go up next year or in 10 years. Like it's markets. There will always be one industry. There will always be an asset class that's going up. So um, just have the patience, be willing to walk away from a winner in the sense what i mean by that is that when you come too late to the party like sometimes for example maybe i've been stalking a breakout and then i miss it 
and it's already up 5%, it's already getting close to my target, where inside of me is like, damn, you were right, just get in now. But then I know, no, my risk reward ratio is just like lopsided, right? Now it's like I'm risking 5%, I'm standing to make one. There's no point, you missed it. There will be another one. Fight, like, you know, it's like fight to live another day. So one thing that I really learned and it changed my trading was I have to take this seriously. You know, I have, you, have to, you have to do it either right or you shouldn't bother trading because you are competing with the sharpest mind in the world. You are competing with professional traders who are equipped with the best softwares, best internet, best education and best mentoring. So don't bother trading if you really don't want to invest in your education or in the proper platform or proper uh, tools that you need for trading. When I started trading, I was using one of these Canadian banks as a broker. It was not a direct access. So my order sometimes would take about one minute or two minutes to get filled. It's, it was, I was just losing money. And because it was a joke, you know, you don't, you can't day trade with a slow platform. You really need the direct access software, hotkeys, you know, your orders have to get filled immediately, less than a second. The only thing that I realized was, um, you know, I, I think it changed the direction of my trading career was, I realized that this is a serious thing. This is not something that you can mess around with and see maybe it works and maybe, maybe it doesn't. If you want to take it seriously, you have to devote some energy and resources to that. And you have to invest in your business and then you can take it off. And we are living in a very competitive world. Everything is competitive. In a corporate life, there is a competition. Businesses, you open a coffee shop. If there is good market, there are 10 other coffee shops next week where they open. So it's a very competitive environment. Same as trading. Trading is also a business. It's a very competitive business. So you have to do it right or just go home. Don't bother doing that. Because your performance is measured daily. If you are, for example, an Olympic swimmer, no matter how good you are in, in the, during the you know, preparation and practice, you have to be perfect in the competition day. You have to be in the Olympic day. In that day, you have to perform well. Otherwise, nothing matters. It, no other profession is like that. If you are an engineer, if you don't feel good, you just don't go to work, but you still get paid and your career won't get affected. And a lot of professions are like that. If you're a lawyer, if you don't feel for one week or two weeks or one month, it still is okay. But the day trader, doesn't matter how good you are, you have to be in excellent physical and emotional condition that same day. So people usually ignore that fact that you have to have a good sleep last night. You shouldn't over-caffeinate yourself. You should be in a good physical condition, you know, like you have done exercise, you're feeling well, because the decisions that you're making are a matter of seconds. And there has been a lot of studies that, you know, good physical condition is actually affecting the cognitive decisions. So there is an extremely, you know, a powerful correlation between the physical condition and the decisions that you're making on day trading. I think most of the people will ignore that. I know a lot of people don't sleep or they drunk or they didn't party last night so, and they want to come and uh, trade the next day. I've done these kind of things and I know when I'm not in the best physical condition, I'm usually making decisions that when I go back in time, so why, why did I do that? Why did I get into that trade? So I think traders should know, no matter how good you are, no matter how what kind of experience and education you have, if you don't trade that stock well, you won't get anywhere.